Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about textile density, or more specifically, we're going to be making a blueprint that's going to allow us to check our textile density in Engine. Um, I'm not going to go too much into what textile density is or how it works. There's a really good uh, write up by this guy, Leonardo Izzy from Ubisoft. Um, basically, we want our assets to have the same density of pixels on them. So uh, here, the wall has got really low res textures versus this cube that's got really high. Don't want that. Um, like I say, not going to go too much into it here. Um, but this is kind of what we're looking for: is everything having the same textile density. So, um, obviously, when you're making things, just make sure you're making them correctly. But if you're working in a big team or you're working with outsourcers, maybe you want some way to check this in Engine. Um, there are various view modes up in here. Uh, optimization view modes, you can do things like checking your light map density uh, and your kind of like texture streaming settings, but as far as I'm aware, there isn't one that allows you just to check your texture density. But luckily for us, we can build one in a blueprint. So um, I'm just going to jump into a blueprint class, it's going to be an actor. We're going to place this in the world and then click it to do different things for us. So uh, texture density checker. I'm just going to open this up. So, in the event graph, I'm just going to get rid of all these things. We're going to create a custom event, uh, and I'm going to call this, uh, I don't know, override materials. And what we're going to do is going to click this button here called call in editor. If I just do that, compile, and go back and create a copy of this in the world, uh, you can see here we've got a button, override materials. So, that function that we're about to write, we're able to click this and have it run uh, in the editor at editor time. So we're building a little tool for us, um, which is really useful. So what is this going to do? Well, what we want to do is get all actors of class. So we're going to get all of the static meshes. If I could spell static meshes, static mesh actors. So this is going to output an array. Uh, it's going to have contain all the actors in the scene. Uh, and if then if I just do a for loop or for each loop, I'm going to run over each one of these actors and do something with it. So just to test that this is working, I'm just going to print. I'm going to print a string and I'm going to print the string which is going to be the name of my actors. So hopefully that makes sense. Get all the actors, all of the static meshes, and then for each one, we're going to get the name and just print that to the screen. And if I close this and if I've done this correctly, there we are, so we're getting the name of all of our static meshes. Uh, this is really cool. Um, now we've got all of our actors. Uh, what do I actually want to do this with them? Well, I want to override the materials, but sometimes objects have more than one material, so I've got to make an allowance for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the number of materials. Uh, get the materials, there we are. Uh, it's going to automatically put this node in because we want to get the static mesh component first. Um, and now I'm going to do another loop and I'm going to say just a normal for loop not a for each uh, and I'm going to do let's say there's three materials on my object when well, I want to do a loop three times but we're starting to count at zero so if this was three we want to go zero, one, two so our end of our loop is actually three minus one uh, it's very common in loops because they start counting at zero to put this minus one in uh, so I'm going to go each free dot actor in the scene, loop over a number of materials, and what do we want to do with this loop is we're going to do set material, and we're going to do it on this set material, set material, static mesh, and again it's going to create this node because we need the static mesh component. Um, and here, element index, well if the object had three materials, the whole point of this loop is so that it'll override the right material, or all the materials, uh, and we're going to need a material, so I haven't actually made one yet, so it's going to be very simple. If I go into my common materials, it may even exist already, but we'll just create a new one. Uh, um, UV checker. Obviously, this will help with uh, checking for UV distortion as well. If you've got UVs that are skewed or or things like that, uh, and it's just going to be a simple texture, the UV map, and it's going to be a unlit material. So this is just a texture that has a grid on it with some colours, so you can see 
the tiling and repeat for that. Some any kind of checker like this will be be usable. Uh, and now we're going to put that one in. UV. What did I call it? Checker. There we are. So compile this. Hopefully, if you've done this correctly, we're going to get all the actors. We're going to kind of iterate over each one of those actors. We're going to get how many materials they've got. And for each one of those materials, we're just going to replace it with this one that we've made. Uh, and if I go in here, give it a second compile, and there we are. We've replaced all of our objects, all of our materials, with our UV checker. So we can see the density of this object and this object. These are the default objects in game. Thankfully, Epic have uh, done these things correctly. Uh, and you can see the UV texture density is pretty good. This is an object that I've made. It's a bit stretched. Uh, the sides of this are all over the shop. Uh, the top's different from the sides. These aren't necessarily made to be the highest quality assets. Sometimes we will say here this is going to be a display screen. We may want higher resolution because we need to be able to have text, something like that, that's readable. Um, oops, let's undo this. Um, so here we are. Um, well, what happens if we want to undo this? Well, unfortunately this only partially works. So if we go back into our blueprint, if we take the entire uh, chain of, of nodes here and just make a copy, we need to give it a new name. So I'm going to call this Reset Material. Again, call an editor. And this time, all the logic is going to be the same, but rather than telling it which material to use, I'm just going to plug in None. And what this is going to do is reset that back to normal. Well, these objects worked. Here, the material that's been applied has been applied actually at the static mesh level, so it's resetting it back to that default. Um, unfortunately, for some of these materials, here, or these objects, these were just default objects out of the um, Create tab here, and if we open up, this has the world grid material set. So, as long as it's everything is set in your static mesh correctly, um, then this will reset nicely. Uh, however, if you're using uh, any kind of um, overrides in scene, then this will destroy it. So, But with that said, you can always create a copy of your scene, run this check as a destructive process, and then once it's been run, delete that scene once you've found the errors. Um, I will say, if you're using a tiling material, obviously the UVs don't need to be set correctly. They need to be set correctly for the tiling material, but you've got control over your texture density in your um, in your actual material itself. So this will override. Obviously this is being applied directly to the UV, so at the one-to-one -one level. Um, but if your material has something like this, and it's designed to be a tiling material, obviously it's not the UV texture density that's controlling it, it's the material tiling that's controlling the texture density. So, so this is a great way for things like props, anything that's been uniquely unwrapped, um, obviously now everything's going to be super high res, um, but it's a nice way of checking by just doing a quick override of all the materials. So, um, hope that's helpful. Hopefully, maybe you learned something about using blue utilities. This is called blue utilities, or at least it used to be called blue utilities. I don't know if it is now. Uh, they may have rebranded that, but this uh, call in editor um, can be really useful for doing things like this: overriding materials, setting up little scripts in Blueprint to help you. Um, with your editor tasks. Um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, hopefully, please, yeah, do check out this uh, description of text density. It's a really good in depth uh, breakdown of how things work. Uh, and I will see you all next time. Oh, as always, comments, likes, subscribes, let me know. Um, yeah, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>